Okay. Ready? Good afternoon. I would like to call to order the meeting for Senate Committee on Revenue and Economic Development. It is Thursday, March 25th. Will the secretary please call the roll? Senator Dennis. Senator Ratty. Here. Senator Kikefer. Here. Senator Sievers Gansert. Here. Chair Neal. Here. Okay, so before I begin, um, I would like to explain how virtual committees work really briefly. As you know, uh, we have been virtual pretty much since the beginning of the session. If you would like to participate in the committee, there are four ways um, in which to engage. Number one, register to participate in the committee meeting through the new system on Nellis, which places you in line to testify on the bill or provide public comment. You would go to the agenda item on Nellis and then you would click participation and then you would receive call-in information. The second way to participate is to submit written testimony to the committee's email address or fax number listed on the agenda. The third way is to share your opinion via the legislature's opinion application on Nellis. And fourth, there is, you can view the committees through the legislator's YouTube channel. So we have a couple of uh, things to do today, committee members. We have to introduce the committee BDR and we will have a work session before we get into SB 310. So the committee introduction that we will have is on the live entertainment tax, which basically removes the exemption from sports teams and with an effective date of January, 2022. So I would like to accept a motion to introduce uh, BDR 32571. I'll move. Thank you. First from Senator Ratty. Second. I, I can second it. Okay, thank you, uh, Senator Severs Gansert. All right, so this, uh, our committee bill is introduced. Well, I'm gonna take a motion, right, Joe? All in favor of the um, committee introduction of BDR 32571. I do a roll call. Okay. <laughs> All right. Secretary, could you please take do a roll on the committee introduction? Senator Dennis? Yes. Senator Ratty? Yes. Senator Kikefer? Yes. Senator Sievers Gansert? Yes. Chair Neal? Yes. All right. Thank you for that. Uh, committee BDR is introduced. Um, we will now move to our. You muted, Madam Chair. Okay, I don't know what's going on with me today. So I will go ahead and move to our work session, which is on uh, a AB nine. Um, so, uh, Mr. Real, could you uh, break? out the work session and tell the committee what's going on with this document. Thank you, Madam Chair. For the record, Joe Real, Deputy Fiscal Analyst with the Fiscal Analysis Division of the Legislative Council Bureau. The work session uh, agenda item today is Assembly Nine, revises provisions governing the disclosure of certain confidential information by the Department of Taxation, sponsored by the Assembly Committee on Revenue, the Department of Taxation, and was heard in this committee on March 18th. Assembly Bill 9 revises confidentiality provisions contained in Chapter 360 of the Nevada Revised Statutes to allow the Department of Taxation to disclose in confidence certain confidential taxpayer information to the Budget Division of the Governor's Office of Finance for use in the projection of revenue. The work session document summarizes the individuals that testified on the bill, and there were no amendments. Thank you, Madam Chair. For that, are there any questions on the work session document? We'll do proof. All right, so I have a, a motion from Senator Kikefer. Do I have a second? Second. Okay. Uh, second from Senator Dennis. All right, so uh, we will do a roll call vote. 
on AB9. Senator Dennis? Yes. Senator Ratty? Yes. Senator Kikefer? Yes. Senator Sievers Ganser? Yes. Chair Neal? Yes. All right. So that was a motion to. We did a do pass on AB9. I will take that floor statement. Um, thank you, members, for voting on that. We will now close the work session. And now I will turn the gavel over to Senator Ratty for SB310. <laughs> Why are you like warming your hands? Okay, go ahead. I'm so excited to take control of the Revenue and Economic Development Committee. Thank you, Chair Neal. Uh, I would like to go ahead and open up the hearing on SB 310. Thank you. Good afternoon, uh, Senate Revenue members. SB 310 is Nevada Grow. Um, this has been going on in the legislature since 2015. I would like to thank my colleagues for voting it out since 2015. It has remained a very solid program uh, for small businesses. The focus of Envy Grow has been to take sec second stage businesses and to provide technical assistance and data assistance to these businesses so they can grow to the next level. We have had um, significant success with a small amount of money. Um, when we first um, got our bill in 2015, which was bipartisan, we got $350,000 in order to make magic, build a program from scratch, and try to um, see if we can make a dent in how businesses were performing, small businesses in Nevada. We grew to an allocation of I believe with our last application was $450,000 that we got from the legislature in 2019. And we have grown from our first 15 businesses to, I believe we have 358 businesses currently that we are assisting at College of Southern Nevada to help them grow to their next level. I want to share with you one of our businesses. We actually have a YouTube channel, we have an Instagram channel, but we have been able to, with the allocation that we've received over the two years, bring in quality uh, business counselors. We have been able to bring in uh, video uh, folks who have been able to do a lot of work. And I wanna share this video from Mountain West Eatery before I introduce the program manager Kevin Rayford, who will go through a PowerPoint of what we have done in 20, 2020 and 2021. So if BPS could show this video for Mountain West Eatery. My name is Ricky. And I check out our YouTube channel. We have all of our businesses who have been, well, not all of them, but we have a nice sampling of the businesses who have been assisted by Nevada Grow. State University. BPS. Uh, football scholarship. Graduated around 88 um, with a criminal justice degree. I went into the probation department in Chicago. I guess no BPS. I my mother was from <laughs> All right. Mississippi. And trust me. Sorry, Chair. Give us one moment. But I'm my sorry. wife is from Mindanao, Philippines. And there's a lot of. It, it looks like it's running of... in the background. Really? I can't see anything. Thank you, everyone, for your patience. We'll be back with you in just a minute. Okay. So Senator Ratty, can we flip and just go ahead and get into the PowerPoint and as they get that worked out, which we did work out prior to this meeting. Um, just go ahead, Senator. Yeah, so I'd like to introduce Kevin Rayford. Uh, Kevin, 
can you show, start sharing your PowerPoint and walk us through uh, some of the successes and milestones of NB Grow? Kevin Rayford is a business professor at CSN, a small business development counselor, and he has been the program manager of NB Grow as we went through our growing pains and to the point where we now have our success. I have been managing this, but this past year, Kevin has taken full leadership without me, which is a good thing. Oh. Welcome to Revenue and Economic Development, Mr. Rayford. Please go ahead. Thank you, uh, Madam Chairwoman and members of uh, the committee. Um, I appreciate the opportunity to uh, present uh, to you. So is my screen um, visible now? It is. It's still on, um, it has multiple slides. I don't know if you can go full screen. There you go. Thank you. So this is a Nevada Grow uh, program. Um, we, you know, you see the MBDA. We actually have some funding from the Commerce Department, the Minority Business Development Agency. And so only because of Nevada Grow did we get this funding. And we only have it because we have Nevada Grow in conjunction with that. So. I'll walk you through our presentation right now. And please stop me for any questions. I'm used to teaching in my classroom and getting hands raised all the time. So, you know, please stop me when you have any questions. Just to show you the key metrics where we are right now, we've served about 358 businesses. I say about because uh, my phone is ringing 24 seven. So we probably have had people this morning that have reached out and my staff has already addressed them. Um, I'm just coming right now from a video shoot at Mothership Coffee with Wani uh, Romero downtown area over in the downtown project. And so um, that'll be a great video when we post it up there. But basically here are the businesses served, the jobs created, capital formation, which includes um, COVID response loans, about 1.1 million. Uh, the overall revenue impact, about $17,715,886. The approximate cost to serve each businesses, each of our clients, is about $929. And the average amount of economic impact we provide is about $52,088. So for every $929 to serve as a client, they'll say that you know, we generate for them at least $52,000. Um, these are our, our clients and our client growth. The numbers may appear small to you, but I don't know if you can see them or not, but we started 2015, you know, just with 12 clients, but we've been growing pretty steadily. You see, you know, how we have the big jump, you know, between 2019 and 2021. So right now people really want our business. In all the slides I'll show you, please stop me, but these are real people. Um, Sonia is fantastic, Chef Sonia. She makes the best granola on the planet. I got, I got a three and a half year old and he can't get enough of it. And so um, that's one of the businesses that we serve. She, uh, right now we're helping her pivot. She's in the Desert Shores area of Las Vegas. I'm not familiar with that, you know, with all the ducks and the ponds. It's fantastic over by the Americana Cafe. But um, we're helping her pivot. I mean, she's got a small business, but she's not getting the foot traffic. So we're going to take her granola online as well as she also makes bagels. And so she's going to be doing some private labeling for the uh, Wynn Casino and a few of the other properties on the strip. So we're taking her uh, uh, pivoting to e-commerce as well as um, helping her do some retail, getting her on shelf. Um, here, just another slide that shows you the background of, you know, how we've grown and so how many clients we've, you know, increased year to year. Um, the previous one was the cumulative total. This is individual years. The picture is uh, Revive Brand Co., which was on the Steve Harvey show, um, Thunderdome, where they actually won the grand prize and were able to launch their product by being on Steve Harvey's uh, reality-based uh, entrepreneurship show. Um, the picture on my left it looks pretty lame, but this may be one of the best um, slides. Right now, we're taking companies that were just brick and mortar, whether you're a food truck, whether you're a barbershop, and we're building apps and putting them online, taking pictures, building apps, doing coding, doing um, web design, and taking these companies that were just brick and mortar and putting them online. And so here's a basic setup of one of the computers that we use to get our customers lined up and going online. And you can't see to the right. So when you see our budget, we actually purchase servers. So if you've had a business and you want to go online, 
we actually are purchasing dedicated servers for your business because a lot of people come and say, we're going to help you. Even Google, they do these workshops, but then they try to hit you on the back end with these memberships and subscriptions. But if we have a server for you. There's no cost to you. You've paid your state funded money and used your tax dollars. So you can log on, have a back end system that's fully integrated without having any uh, subscription fees for a back end server, which is very secure, very safe, always on 24 7 accessible. Which brings me to this slide, the budget. So this shows you the salaries that have already been spent. We have uh, chamber stipends where we use the chambers to broadcast to their members about what's going on and how you can become a part of the Nevada Go program. Um, that's the chamber stipends, um, urban chamber. I mean, you can stop me if you want to, Chair. Uh, yeah, Nate. Kevin, uh, Mr. Rayford, can you talk about how many people are in that $208,000 salary, please? About 17. Thank you for that. Uh, and then you see the subscriptions. Uh, we pay for the data because all our decisions are based upon data. It's not something where we look at anecdotes. We actually run data on zip codes. We run data on industries. So if you have, like, for example, uh, Chef Sonia's granola, we'll target what languages she needs to put her brochures in based upon the neighborhood. And we have people on staff, as you mentioned before, I asked prompt before, um, how many people we have on staff? We speak several languages, including uh, Tagalog. We've got a huge Filipino community now. Uh, we speak, you know, not say we, but, you know, we have people who speak uh, Mandarin as well as Cantonese, uh, Tigray, which is an Eritrean language. We have a huge Ethiopian community, so we address that as well. Of course, we have Russian, and um, we have a few other languages too, uh, French and Spanish. And Portuguese. So we um, address different people, different languages. Oh, and also Vietnamese. Let me add Vietnamese too, because we, we've just really taken a big foothold in the Vietnamese community. Um, you see the technology and office equipment. So our staff has their own computers. So we're all we're mobile. We go on site. In order for our clients to trust us, they have to know that we have our own computers. To, so that way their data is not shared. We've got our own servers. Um, we do a lot of videos, as we heard before. All those videos are backed up on secured servers as well. And so that way, if anything happens, we've got a backup and a backup to the backup and a backup to that backup. So that way, no one loses any of their data. And then we also have accrued salaries, which we haven't spent yet, but we're going to be spending um, pretty soon. Here's just an example of the impact that we have. Um, and stop me. I mean, I'm a professor, so feel free to stop me if you have any questions. But here's one thing that we do that's really unique. Um, at the core, like I said before, I am a business professor. So my students get extra credit for going to these businesses. So if you look to the left, um, you'll see the coffee class, Kyle Cunningham. This was uh, posted uh, earlier in the semester. So you can see he had 127 views. And of the 127 views, <laughs> I'd say about 90 of those went to his coffee shop. Bought some coffee for the extra credit. Then they posted, Mr. Rayford, this is Daniel from your class. Where's my extra credit? One of the 50 points. They don't need the extra credit. I'm an easy professor. They're going to get an A no matter what because they do the work. But the key thing is they go and they patronize these businesses. And that's what I'm saying is that's what makes it special too. So when you want to look at that number, when I show the economic value, that's a low ball number. So 52000 is pretty small when you think about it. If you total customer lifetime value, it'd be at least triple because my students tell somebody, they tell somebody, they tell somebody, and all of a sudden the business owners, they'll text me, Kevin, without you, I don't know if I would made it through last month. And, you know, they got tears in their eyes, but that's what happens because my students go there. The only downside is my students, sometimes they worry, and they're like, please, can you take a picture with us? I'm like, if they're cooking or if they're busy, you do not need to send me a picture of you with them. Let them do their work. But the people don't mind. They like it. They come out from behind the stove or they do whatever they got to do. They take a picture of my students. My students get the extra credit. But it's all good. You know, it's a fun community. And when I check my evaluations, I'm not a very good professor. But they will say the highlight of your course was going to visit all these businesses all over town and taking pictures and enjoying the food. So that's what it's all about. Um, this just shows you a snapshot. So I don't know if these are in your neighborhood, but some of the businesses that we've done in 2021, um, you can see the help received. Everybody's getting marketing. Everybody, I'm helping them with their EIDL loans, their PPP loans, and of course, helping them pivot and be better to serve uh, people you know, from uh, e-commerce. You're going to see food trucks. You'll see nail shops. You see um, you know, a, a Tyler's Express is a body shop. Uh, so you know everything you can possibly imagine 
uh, Camp 29. Uh, that's actually a former NFL player, eight-year veteran, Mark McMillan, who's one of our clients, and he can't say enough about us. Uh, Mark is awesome. He played uh, eight years in the NFL, and he's a great story. He's 5'8", 150 pounds. That was his playing weight in the NFL. So he's an overachiever, and he loves our group. And so um, we're helping him create uh, two businesses. One, he actually trains young people for their uh, college scholarships, as well as he has his own company, which he helped to launch, called Grillin' McMillan, where he does online cooking presentations and actually has a partnership to ship meat all over the country as well with a company out of Chicago. So those are some anecdotal stories, but you name the industry, we have people um, that we can show you that, you know, that we've helped. Here's uh, Nick Della Pena. If you haven't been to a great Greek restaurant, I suggest you get to one. Um, he's ready to go on a franchise deal. I can announce that now because it's official. He started this in Las Vegas with like two stores and five stores. He's going to be all over the country pretty soon. So you might be driving through the middle of Tulsa, Oklahoma going, wow, Great Creek. That actually started in Las Vegas. And that's going to be a big number that I'm going to put in there. So we see, well, wow, Kevin, how could you say you guys are that much of economic impact? He's going to go on a franchise deal. So he'll be open about 120 uh, great Greeks all throughout the country. So he gives us a lot of credit for looking at his business plan, and helping them go uh, across the country. Um, here's a slide that you know, we mentioned some of the videos. Uh, we've got a lot more videos than this. But yeah, if you go to our, our YouTube channel, please subscribe to our social media, YouTube as well as Instagram. But um, these are some of the businesses where we've done videos. We go on site. We actually give these videos to our clients. They can use them for their social media. And so they know that Nevada Grow is a huge sponsor. They thank us off camera. Um, sometimes they might give us a plug on camera, but these videos are for them. So a lot of times we don't really make them do the really hard plug for the program. We will put together a video that shows um, all what we've done for them, and they're going to give some testimonials. But these videos right now are for our clients to use for their customers and their social media. That's why we don't really have a lot saying, oh, wow. Kevin and his staff are fantastic because it's not about me. It's about them. And they appreciate everything uh, Chairwoman Neal has done for them. So it's all well. It's, it's, it's all good. Um, I'll stop there because it shows you like some more funding sources. But, I mean, you guys can um, let me know what you want to do. And I can even stop sharing if you have any questions. Yeah, Mr. Rayford, um, I, just wanted, I just wanted to let you know that the kind of the norm in the Senate is to let the sponsor uh Neil, Senator Neal, do her whole presentation and then we'll ask questions. So I don't want you to think that the lack of questions were a lack of interest. That's just kind of the normal flow of a Senate hearing here. So um, I think there'll be plenty of questions. So Senator Neal, are you ready for questions? Or do you still have more of a presentation? I just want to add just a little bit more and then we can go to questions. So so I think uh, what Kevin uh, uh, didn't mention, but I think I, most of the people at Senate Revenue have been around and in, in the building for a while, but last last session we added two additional chambers. We added the Henderson Chamber and the Asia Development Council, which then came on, which then helped to spike our growth. And so we have four chambers that are a part of our um, ecosystem that we've been building. And when you see the low numbers, um, like in 2015, when it came out. Uh, we we had some uh, administrative challenges that had nothing to do with me because I had housed it within the Office of Economic Development at CSN, but we had a particular director who didn't see my vision, so he didn't uh, commit to the implementation of it, even though I was, you know, right there. Um, and so after he left is when we started to spike and grow because then I got, like, in, involved in the day-to-day I actually designed the logo, I designed our brochure, and I got heavily involved in what Nevada Grow was gonna be because I felt I was super happy that the state gave us that investment and I wanted to make sure that my vision came to fruition because I believed in it, I believed in second stage businesses and that if we gave them the right assistance and it was assistance for free that we could sprout. And we have, and so I'm super grateful that we have. And so we can get into, uh, I, I'll be open for questions. Mr. Rayford's open for questions. The bill is super simple. So I'll take questions on the bill as well. It's not like it's, it's not very deep. It's only three sections. So whatever you guys have, throw it at me. Okay. <laughs> so with that, we will go ahead and open to questions. Senator Ganser. Thank you, Chair Raddy, or Vice Chair Raddy. And so thank you for bringing this bill forth. And it sure does sound like you've been successful. 
And um, it, it's great to see small businesses get that that boost in the professional expertise, right? Because that's what they don't have. So in looking at section one, two, um, it says no overhead to NC. So that's like their F and A. So you so to make sure that they don't get the F and A when you spend money there. So the is that correct? When you say F and A, you- a facilities and administration. So so at higher ed, the different institutions have sort of an overhead rate. For, for, for grants, and I know when we um, allocate money to economic de- uh, to the governor's office of economic development, like the knowledge fund, the, the knowledge fund requires that they can't use uh, or charge for that overhead administration rate, and it looks like that's similar wording. Yeah, I specifically tried to make sure that the money was going to go direct programming because we didn't have a lot of money. And so to use it over two years, I didn't want it to be used for anything other than direct programming at CSN. Thank you, that that makes sense to me too, so thank you. Additional questions? I'm sure. Senator Kikoffer? So um, have you talked about getting this into into base uh, within NCHI so that you don't have to come back every session? Ask for money that's outside of the budget. I mean, yes, I have. Make it a little easier on yourself, Senator. Come on. I know, but you know, it's been. <laughs> I feel like you're uh, you're telling me what Mr. Gindin has been telling me probably since 2017. But um, <laughs> I have, yes, I have considered it. But it's, I don't. You know, why don't you help me do that, Senator Keefer? Because. I'm a little gun shy of trying to get it in the base because we're kind of weird fiscally um, about inserting programs into the state budget. So, well, it's a uh, <laughs> it's, it's 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 a good program. It's obviously doing good things for our state, and um, you know we've been doing it since what 2015 now or something mm-hmm. like. That. So, um, maybe it's maybe it's time. Maybe it's time. Okay. Thank you, Senator Keefer. Uh, sidebar: I'd also like to know how to get some programs into the base if we can have a uh, conversation offline. Um, I have a question. Um, so, uh, Mr. Reefer, you had indicated that you had brought in some, I think, federal money as well. Uh, Correct. Was the state four hundred thousand dollars, or the money that you've had from the state as a base, was that helpful in bringing in that federal money? Yes, absolutely. Um, yes, and the key thing is, is that. That money from the federal only comes if we have some matching. And so basically, once they saw what we were doing, then they said that they would um, contribute and lay that on top of it. So really, Nevada Grow addresses any small business you could possibly imagine, while the federal funding is from the Minority Business Development Agency. So basically, that's targeting a certain demographic. So basically, that's why you know we got the MBDA funding because we had Nevada grow up and running and they saw what we've been doing and they said, wow, you know, we're going to let you expand what you're doing. So Kevin, can you talk to them about how Nancy Brune was super helpful in bringing that grant to us and then making us kind of be a part of it to get that allocation? Absolutely. So, you know, Dr. Brune has been fantastic. We've been up, you know, on Sunday nights just saying, Kevin, if you could put things out there, what would you do? And surprisingly, um, we have been utilizing what Nancy has envisioned, which is about making this very wide scale, always on training, as well as what um, Chairwoman Neal has done. It's just more a matter of, we haven't even brought to fruition what Dr. Brun has put in. So basically we have funding budget, but we haven't even scratched the surface about what is coming out. And that's gonna be a lot of vocational training, a lot of classes, a lot of uh, targeted um, business expansion all through the state of Nevada, so yes. Dr. Brun has been fantastic. And in fact, you know, when she moves into a new area, she'll be right downstairs from where the podcast room is, where my office is, and where the training facilities are going to be on a North Las Vegas campus of College of Southern Nevada. Fantastic. And then I guess the tough question, if you didn't get the appropriation, what does that mean for the program? We're going to rock and roll without it. I'd love to have it. We're just going to that's okay. So if we don't get the appropriation, we won't have, we might have money for the core of the program, but we won't have money to pay our chambers. And so the chambers get an allocation of $25,000 each year in order to market and be grow. And so part of that marketing strategy is 
They, they, they invest in um, advertising. So each one has a roll-up banner that has Envy Grow. They should have a part-time staff person that is dedicated to Envy Grow to answer calls. It's, it's, the way we built the model was it was a part-time person who each of the chambers would have who was trained in Envy Grow um, to answer questions, get folks um, signed up, registered, connect with Kevin, or connect with Pablo, because Pablo Rea is our GIS specialist, which is an integral part of our bill, because the GIS specialist is the one who goes out and does the data mining for the business. And then Kevin and the other counselors like Michelle um, Chan. Michelle Chan will go in and basically uh, do the business, the analysis of the data for the businesses. And what's super, super important for that is because we give them the data, but we teach them how to fish, right? So the idea is that, yes, we're giving it to you, but we're trying to make you a better business in terms of here's the data, but now if you leave us, you know how to do location, you know how to determine what's what's your best investment for a neighborhood, go and see the saturation that's going on. And so if we don't get funding, we can't fund our chambers who are part of our ecosystem. And if you saw in the budget, about $100,000 that we spend um, to keep them a part of this, and they are our way to get businesses and to be touch points in the broader uh, part of Clark County. I know, I know Kevin is very it's, passionate, but it's I, helpful. <laughs> right, but I mean, yeah, man, and, and I misspoke. I mean, yeah, it would hurt our program, but if we could serve 3%, that 3% will be happy. I mean, you know, so we, we definitely need the money to service the community. It's just that, you know, we've got to, you know, bootstrap or what we can do because these people are living, breathing groups. I appreciate it, Mr. Rayford. I, I think that um, Senator Neal might have had a little heart attack there where we say in a, in a policy bill asking for money that you don't need it. And I know that's not what you meant. You need it very much. <laughs> um, let's see. Do we have any additional questions? Okay, so, Senator Neal, I thought you had alluded to an amendment. Is are there is there going to be anything else coming on this bill, or is this it? No, this is it. I mean, okay. I do. I'm sorry, I haven't had time. But there was, there is going to be an amendment. We wanted to try to do an incubator, and I'm super sorry that I didn't do the conceptual. Um, so we were trying to ex, uh, expand to incubators, which is the super super startup. Right now, we're in the second stage where we, we touch startups, but we also are there in existing business, and then we try to take them to the next level. And so we are looking at trying to do an incubator piece to this and um, develop that layer. Since we've had success, we think that we can grow to take on the little baby businesses um, and try to help them get to what we see with the Great Greek and Mountain West Eatery. So I will provide that conceptual amendment. Thank you, Vice Chair. And I just have one last question. Um, and I guess it's about scalability. So it's working at CSN. It sounds like it's working a lot because of the leadership and management and the personalities involved and their dedication to it. So there's the money, but there's also maybe some extra capital that is just elbow grease from folks like you, the two of you, Nancy Brune, et cetera. So really my question is, is do you think that the model could be replicated? So for instance, does it make sense that Chucky Meadows Community College, College or Western Nevada College or someplace else in the state could do something similar? Yes, I, I do because one of my focuses in 2017 was how to make the program have the infrastructure so that we had kind of like, I guess, not just the legs, but the table and the legs in order to replicate the program. And so there was a lot of, um, I would say, institutional programming that um, that I created or and within CSN to be able to take this and then build it somewhere else. The key component really is a good counselor, very great business counselors in order to lift it off the ground. You have to believe in it. But we we do know what the bones are of this program because I was very much interested in, if I cease to exist in the legislature, 
um, how could this continue to grow on its own and not die out? And typically that's what happens, right? When a legislator no longer is legislating, the programs that they bring to fruition sometimes die on the vine. And so I was very interested in making sure it had a solid structure um, that we could um, maintain and that if we lost Kevin, and I've told Kevin, you need 15 Kevins because <laughs> you can't disappear because I need the program to still go without you. And so, yes, short answer, long way around, but yes. Sir Rayford, anything else you wanted to add before we go to public testimony? Um, just thank you for you know, the opportunity and to answer that piggyback with uh, some of was saying, I talk to my around the state often. And so, you know, there are meetings on every campus that if they had the funding, they could perpetuate what we're doing, you know, in rural. I mean, I'm on the phone with Lincoln County. I'm on the phone with, you know, Elko. And so we talk all the time, my, my, my counterparts at, at TMCC. And so, I mean, it's fine. I mean, you know, we just need more funding to serve, you know, the total state. Okay. All right. Any other questions from the committee? Seeing none, uh, we're going to go ahead and open up the lines for public testimony now. Uh, we're looking for those who would like to testify in support of SB 310. Again, if you'd like to testify in support of SB 310. Thank you, Senator Addy. To take your place in the queue to testify in support for SB 310, please press star nine now to take your place in the queue. Caller with the last three digits, 114. Please state and spell your name for the record. You will have two minutes. Oh, sorry. You may begin. Thank you. Greetings, Chair and members of the committee. My name is Amber Stidham. That's A-M-B-E-R, last name Stidham, S-T-I-D-H-A-M. And I'm here testifying on behalf of the Henderson Chamber of Commerce. We appreciate the sponsor for bringing this bill forward. Our chamber has supported NV Grow since its inception, although we started to get involved um, more in uh, 2019. As you um, heard, this program does focus on small and startup businesses who very much need access to the economic uh, and demographic data that's provided to them through this program. And oftentimes, small business members are experts in their field, but they need support when considering, for instance, uh, where to leave space for their business. And if that area of consideration is already more than saturated with similar businesses, or they need general support in getting a business plan started, which not only aids their operations, but it increases the opportunity for them to access capital for their business. And that's what Envy Grow does. Um, it really puts uh, some of these businesses on a path for success, and that's what Chambers of Commerce really like to see. Since uh, 2019, our chamber has under, undergone the outreach and software training program, uh, training for to serve as a representative for the program. Uh, we work really hard to expose and regrow to thousands of our small businesses while at expos and events. We posted Mr. Rayford for programs to support their services. We push out service alerts and communication out, through our communication outlets. Um, and that's to members and non-members alike. And we are also looking to expand Envy Grow through our Henderson Business Resource Center, which is the state's longest running business incubator in Southern Nevada, in which the Henderson Chamber operates and specifically looks to help um, startup businesses. Not only does this program support um, some of our smallest businesses, but um, it, our organization alone, it's allowed us to support um, many in the Valley as well as adjacent Nevada cities. And I can tell you from Flores, uh, tailors, pest control services, roofers, chiropractors, dog trainers, bakeries, wellness coaches, private security businesses, a startup manufacturer, and many nonprofits, um, not to mention businesses that are located within Henderson's federally designated opportunity zones, which work to support economically depressed communities that need private invest business investments. Embry Grow has been a channel for us to help some of these businesses. So we strongly suggest and encourage your support of this bill. Finally, I would like to thank Senator Neal for working extremely hard. She does work incredibly hard in the interim. Boots on the ground, Kevin Rayford at CSN for um, helping us be a partner in this program to ensure its success and the success of businesses in our community. Thank you. Thank you. 
startup manufacturer and many nonprofits. Caller with the last three digits, 621. Please state and spell your name for the record. You may begin. Good afternoon, Vice Chair and members of the committee. My name is Dylan Keith, D-Y-L-A-N-K-E-I-T-H, Policy Analyst with the Vegas Chamber. We've supported Nevada Grow since its inception, and we continue to do so. We also support it being uh, added into the actual budget, so the good Senator Neal does not have to come back and propose uh, to bring this program back every year. So far, the program speaks for itself. The numbers, the return on investment, it's all incredibly immense how much this program has impacted the economy in Southern Nevada, especially those with small businesses. We're in strong support of this bill and we urge your support as well. Thank you so much. Thank you. Call it with the last three digits, 505. Please state and spell your name for the record. You may begin. Hi, this is Hi, this is Peter Guzman. Can you hear me? Yes, sir, can, we can hear you. Thank you. Hi, this is Peter Guzman, president of the Latin Chamber of Commerce, Nevada. Uh, boy, this bill is so personal in so many ways. Uh, the Latin Chamber and myself have certainly been there from the not only the inception but even the idea. I think because I can remember Senator Neal talking about this in a room and. And um, to see how hard she's worked to carry this thing, I mean, it's, it's incredible. And it has done incredible things. I'm going to speak for the Latin Chamber of Commerce, uh, who's been a partner, um, along with uh, 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 Mr. Rayford. Uh, this, is single -hand this, this, this policy has single-handedly uh, changed many, many people's lives in terms of business, small business. It has had a tremendous impact on so many small businesses. And at the Latin Chamber, where we have to deal with, you know, uh, uh, nervousness and scared, uh, folks being scared with immigration issues, uh, it's taken a little more time. But we've, we have a dedicated area, dedicated line, a dedicated person who handles this at the Latin Chamber of Commerce. And it has just continued to grow and grow as the word has gotten out on how safe and how great of a, uh, of a policy and bill that this is. So uh, we are wholeheartedly behind it. We commend the, the just sheer work uh, that Senator Neal has put into this thing over many years and to see it now uh, grow to where it is. She should be very proud and we're certainly uh, proud to have stood next to her um, and others um, to, to see this thing uh, come to fruition and uh, I urge you to allow it to continue. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mr. Guzman. Caller with the last three digits, 308. Please state and spell your name for the record. You may begin. Thank you. Good afternoon, Madam Chair and members of the committee. My name is Clarissa Cota, C-L-A-R-I-S-S-A-C-O-T-A. I'm the Vice President Provost of the North Las Vegas Campus for the College of Southern Nevada. And on behalf of CSN and our President, Dr. Federico Zaragoza, we are here to express our support for SB 310, continuation of the Nevada Grow Program. Under the leadership of Senator Neal and support by the Nevada Legislature, this program has grown year over year. CSN is extremely proud of this program and the positive impact it has had on hundreds of minority business owners and their families right in our communities. We would like to recognize our very own Kevin Rayford, who has seen the, whose passion and grassroots networking and entrepreneurship has been the catalyst to the program's success and his efforts to also build the succession plan for the program. CSN has a mission to empower our students and communities to achieve, succeed, and prosper. This program perfectly aligns with these efforts. We cherish the Nevada Grow Program, its success in serving our minority communities who need us most. A program such as Nevada Grow is a game changer to individual families and sets them up for future success. The data provided to you today shows that we are in a positive projectile going forward. 
I urge this committee now more than ever to continue its support of SB 310 and provide the stability for the program as we continue to build a strong foundation, building the ecosystem of chambers and the business communities to provide support to move it into the next level going into the future. I would like to thank Senator Neal and the committee for your consideration and the tireless work that it takes to support such a program that is such a positive impact to our communities. Thank you for your time and consideration in support of SB 310. Thank you. Thank you. Take your place in the queue to give support for SB 310. Please press star nine now. Thank you, Vice Chair Raddy. There are no more callers wishing to testify in support of SB 310 at this time. Okay, let's go ahead and open up the line for those who would like to testify in opposition to SB 310. To voice opposition to SB 310, please press star nine now to take your place in the queue. Thank you, Vice Chair Raddy. There appear to be no callers wishing to oppose SB 310 at this time. Thank you. Let's go ahead and open up the lines for neutral on SB 310. To give neutral testimony to SB 310, please press star nine now to take your place in the queue. Thank you, Vice Chair Raddy. There appear to be no callers wishing to give neutral testimony to SB 310 at this time. All right, that will close public testimony and we'll bring it back to the sponsor for any closing comments. I wanna thank uh, the Committee on Senate Revenue for hearing SB 310 um, and I would appreciate your support on this bill to basically move it to finance. Thank you, uh, Senator Neal. Thank you, Mr. Rayford. Thank you to all of the chambers, uh, to Ms. Brune from the Gwynn Center, everybody who is rallying behind this program. It looks like you're getting some fabulous work done. So thank you for bringing this to our committee. Um, with that, I will go ahead and turn the chairmanship back over to Chair Neal. Hey, thank you for that. Um, so uh, SB 310 concluded our business. We will go ahead and open up for uh, public comment. Is anyone on the line for public comment? Thank you, Chair Neal. If you would like to give public comment on today's meeting, please press star nine now. All right, Chair, there appear to be no callers wishing to give public uh, testimony, or sorry. Um. Okay, great. So seeing no uh, public comment, we will go ahead and adjourn Senate Revenue. Everybody have a good afternoon. <laughs>